Welcome back to First Year Undergraduate Microeconomics. In this presentation, we're going to look at a number of specific technologies. We're going to present them both mathematically and then in diagrams. The first one is going to capture our idea of increasing marginal cost. The marginal cost function is given by this formula down here. What does it mean? Well, for example, the marginal cost of the first unit is going to be given by 1. The marginal cost of the second unit is going to be given by 2. The marginal cost of a third unit is going to be given by 3, and so on. So that the marginal cost of the qth unit is going to be given by q. Now, the general formula that captures that is this total cost function here. So we're going to have our fixed cost as normal, and then our variable costs are going to be half q squared. That's going to give us an average cost function here. That's obviously just given by, well, f divided by q is the first bit, and then a half q squared divided by q, well, the squared just disappears, it's a half q. So this is our average cost function. What does this technology look like? Let's draw our technology on these set of axes here. We have dollars on the vertical axis and we have quantity on the horizontal axis. Let's start off by drawing marginal cost. So marginal cost Q is just equal to Q, just from the previous slide. What do we mean by that? Well, at a quantity of 1, the marginal cost is 1. So the marginal cost is going to go through this point here. What about at a quantity of 2? Well, at a quantity of 2, the marginal cost is 2. That's what this simple formula means. For any quantity, the marginal cost is equal to the quantity. So, we know that the marginal cost curve is going to go through this point up here. And we could keep going. And if we did so, we could then join up all the points and we would get the marginal cost curve it's simply a curve with slope equal to 1, or where this angle is equal to 45 degrees. OK, so that's easy. What about our average cost curve? Well, let's just put up a formula. The average cost for this technology is equal to F divided by Q plus 1 half of Q. So we know that from the previous slide as well. How do we draw that? Well, first off, note that as q gets very small, a half q goes to zero, but f divided by q gets infinitely large. Any positive number divided by zero is equal to infinity. So we know that average cost is going to start off very high at low quantities. It's going to come down. We know it's going to cross the marginal cost curve at the bottom of the average cost, and then it's going to start increasing. So we know the average cost curve for this technology is going to look something like this. There's the average cost curve. It starts off very high. It comes down, crosses the marginal cost at the bottom of the average cost curve, and then starts increasing. You could work out exactly where this intersection is by setting average cost equal to marginal cost. You'll find it will depend on the value of the fixed cost. Let's do one simple example of that. Let's look at the special case where the fixed cost is equal to zero. So here we've got the same technology again, but just made a little bit simpler. So marginal cost of Q is still going to be equal to Q, just as we had before, so our marginal cost curve won't change. But notice that our fixed cost has disappeared. So our total cost curve up here, well, it's just equal to a half Q squared, which means that the average cost, when we divide total cost by Q, it's simply going to be, well, a half Q squared divided by Q is just equal to a half Q. So we know immediately that marginal cost is going to be equal to the quantity, and average cost is going to be half the quantity. They're both going to be nice straight lines. What do they look like? Well, here we have our set of axes again, and we can put marginal cost straight on. It's just a straight line of slope 1. It's the same as before, that's our marginal cost curve, exactly the same as before. At a quantity of 1, the marginal cost is equal to 1, 
at a quantity of 2. The marginal cost is equal to 2 at a quantity of 3. The marginal cost is, well, you get the idea. I'll fill in this one, I'm in. We'll go to average cost. What does average cost look like? Well, remember, average cost is a half Q. So we know that the average cost curve, well, at quantity of 0, a half Q is 0. At quantity of 1, a half Q is a half. At quantity of 2, a half Q is 1, and so on. So our average cost curve is going to, let me bring that point across, it's going to look like that. It's going to be a straight line of slope a half. When the quantity is 2, the average cost is a half Q, which is 1, and so on. So we've now got our average cost and our marginal cost curves for the simple technology where the fixed costs are equal to zero and the variable costs are equal to a half Q squared. Notice that while this sort of looks a bit different, it actually satisfies our rules that we had before. Notice that at the minimum average cost, which is zero, average cost and marginal cost cross each other, marginal cost is zero, an average cost is zero when quantity is zero. And notice that the marginal cost is pulling up the average cost because the marginal cost is above the average cost for every level of Q. So it satisfies our rules. It doesn't look quite like the nice U-shaped average cost curves we've been drawing, but it's perfectly legitimate. Okay, let's look at another really simple technology. We're going to look at this one given here where the marginal cost is just given by a constant. D just so that you can see what this means, le let's imagine that that constant was $7. What does that mean? Well, it says that if you want to produce one unit, the cost of producing that unit, the extra cost, the marginal cost, is $7. If you're already producing one unit and you want to produce a second unit, then the second unit will cost you C, or here, seven dollars. What if you're producing a thousand units and you want to produce one more unit? Well, the extra cost of producing the thousand and one-th unit, given you're producing a thousand units, is going to be given by seven dollars. So marginal cost is constant. How do we get total costs from that? Well, our total cost function is going to be given up here, it's going to have two parts. The first part is given by F, that's our fixed costs, and our variable costs will bear C times Q. They're actually directly derived from our marginal costs. How do we see that? Well, let's think about the variable costs. If you produce one unit, the variable costs are given by well, the marginal cost, $7. What if you want to produce a second unit? You know the second unit will cost you an extra $7. So it costs you $7 to produce the first unit and another $7 to produce the second unit. So the total variable cost is $7 times 2, or more generally, C dollars times Q. What about if you produce a third unit? Well, the third unit will cost you another $7. So it was $7 for the first unit, plus $7 for the second unit, plus $7 for the third unit. So your variable costs are just 3 times 7, or $21. Or more generally, variable costs are C times Q. And that holds for any quantity. So our total cost function has fixed costs, F, plus variable costs, C times Q. And we can get our Average cost function, just divide total costs by quantity, so it's F divided by Q, and CQ divided by Q is just C. So that's our marginal, average, and total costs. This technology is actually really important. It's an example of what is sometimes called a natural monopoly technology. I'll show you why when we get to the diagram, but it's sometimes thought that this type of technology is the relevant costs for, say, electricity transmission systems, for railway tracks, for roads, for water distribution systems, and so on. Why? Well, the idea is that they're all businesses that have a big fixed cost of setting up the business. For example, of building the transmission lines for electricity, or building the dams for a water system. 
So we have a big fixed cost. But once you've got the fixed cost in place, once you have the infrastructure in place, then the marginal cost of sending another electron through some wires or sending another litre of water through the pipes, the marginal cost is pretty much constant, no matter how much water you send through or how many electrons you send through. So this is the sort of technology that we think characterises big infrastructure projects. Here's what it looks like on our normal set of axes. Remember that the marginal cost at any quantity is simply equal to that constant C. So our marginal cost curve is just going to be a straight line at the level C dollars. No matter what quantity we produce, the marginal cost is the same. C. What about our average cost? Well, our average cost is going to be given by, let's write the formula down, average cost oops, equals F divided by Q plus C. Notice that when quantity is very small, F divided by Q is very big, and when quantity gets very big, F divided by Q, well, it starts to become quite small. Average cost is going to go down. It's going to get closer and closer to C. It'll never actually get to be equal to this value of C because F divided by Q is always a positive number. It gets very, very small as Q gets very, very big, but it's always C plus something. So our average cost curve is going to look something like that. Average cost given by the purple curve and marginal cost given by the red curve. Notice that this still satisfies our normal rules. Where does average cost and marginal cost meet? Well, they meet at effectively an infinite quantity. And that's going to be the minimum level of average cost because average cost keeps going down. It gets closer and closer to C, but never quite gets there for finite quantities. Further, notice that because marginal cost is less than average cost, marginal cost is pulling average cost down. So it satisfies all our normal rules. So why is it called a natural monopoly technology? Well, because average cost keeps getting smaller and smaller when quantity increases. It means that whatever quantity you want to be produced, you prefer it being produced through one business rather than it being produced through more than one business. How can we see that? Let's imagine we wanted to produce 10 units. And there's two ways we could do that. We could either produce it through one business or we could have two businesses each producing five units. Notice that the average cost for one business producing 10 units, which is given by this number here, in, that's less than the average cost of producing five units, which is given by this number up here. So if we had two businesses each producing five units, their average costs would be up here. If we have one business producing ten units, its average costs are lower. So it's going to be cheaper to produce the ten units through one business rather than splitting it between two businesses. And that holds for any quantity because average cost is falling. So it's sometimes called a natural monopoly because we only want one supplier of this product for this technology. Given the technology, the cheapest way we can produce any quantity is to have one business. Take a slight variation on our natural monopoly technology. Our total cost is going to look like our natural monopoly technology as long as we don't produce too much. What do I mean by too much? Well, I've included what we can call a capacity constraint here, Q upper bar. Q upper bar is simply the total amount that we can produce. If we try and produce any more, well, it's impossible. So our total cost of producing greater than Q bar, well, it's infinite. It's simply impossible to do. 
What's a simple example? Well, imagine you have a car park. You build the car park, fixed cost F. There's a small marginal cost of having cars in the car park, maybe the cost of maintaining the ticket machine. That may depend on the number of cars that are actually using your car park. But if you've got a car park that's got a capacity of, say, a thousand spaces, then once you have a thousand cars in your car park, it's full. You can't let a thousand and one or a thousand and two or a thousand and three cars into the car park. There's no space for them. So the cost of producing more than a thousand car parks in your car park, which only has a thousand spaces, is infinite. So our average cost and our marginal cost, well, they're the same as for our natural monopoly technology, so long as we don't exceed capacity. But if we did go past capacity, then, well, we can't. It's impossible. So average cost, if we try and produce above Q bar, is infinite. And marginal cost, if we tried to produce above Q bar, would also be infinite. So our technology is going to look exactly like the natural monopoly technology up to the capacity constraint. Let's draw it on our axes. Let me put on first our capacity constraint. That's going to be really important. So this is Q bar up here. A thousand cars, say, in our car park. Our marginal cost is just going to be a straight line up to the capacity constraint. So that's our marginal cost C. What happens at the capacity constraint? Well, marginal cost, it also shoots off to infinity. What about our average cost? Well, our average cost is going to start off high. It's going to come down towards our marginal cost curve. But what happens when we hit our capacity constraint? Our average cost of the next unit, well, it ducks off to infinity as well. So we end up with this really messy vertical bit. Purple line is our average cost curve. Red line is our marginal cost curve. So it sort of looks like our natural monopoly, but it isn't a natural monopoly anymore. That's really easy to see. Remember our natural monopoly said it was always cheaper to produce any quantity through one business rather than through multiple businesses. That clearly doesn't hold here. For example, imagine that the quantity you wanted to produce was out here. It's impossible to produce that through one business. You would have to have more than one business to produce that quantity. So while you may only have one water distribution system in a town, you often have many car parks. Each of those car parks has the sort of technology that we've got here, and the efficient production is to have more than one car park because the car parks sometimes reach their capacity constraints. Now, this technology is also really useful. Notice it satisfies our rules. Marginal cost is less than average cost, so it's pulling average cost down until we hit the capacity constraint. So, it fits our normal example. But this is a good example of a technology that fits a lot of simple manufacturing processes. We've already given the example of a car park. Another one, suppose that you're an electricity generator. You're producing the electrons to go into those wires. The wires may be a natural monopoly, but your generation facility will have a capacity constraint. In general, it costs a large fixed cost to build the generator, then a pretty constant marginal cost until you get close to capacity. So this is a pretty good first approximation of an electricity generating business. It's also a pretty good first approximation of many other manufacturing businesses where you have a fixed capacity. Now, we've seen a number of different examples of different technologies. For the rest of this course, we're going to be usually using our simple technology, our nice U-shaped average cost curve, increasing marginal cost curve that we've seen in the previous presentations. But remember, the rules of technology, in particular the relationship between average cost and marginal cost, are much more general than that. Talk to you next time.